Heels welcomes you to the third Euro Symposium on Healthy Aging. Heels is the largest non-governmental organization in Europe promoting and advocating scientific research into longevity and biogerontology. Thanks to generous support from our sponsors, Heels was able to organize this conference. The conference will highlight the cutting edge of knowledge in the field of biogerontology and provide a unique opportunity for researchers, government officials, biotech executives and advocates from around the world to meet, network and forge new scientific collaborations. So um, we have to sadly cut the panel down to about 20 minutes, so we better get started. Uh, maybe quickly introducing the panel members. You are all familiar already with Alexander Sefalin, so I won't do that again. And uh, next to him sits Dmitry Kaminsky, uh, who is uh, the senior partner of Deep Knowledge Ventures. And next to him sits Michael Grave, and he uh, just set up uh, Project 21 with the Sense Foundation, giving $5 million in uh, seed funding for rejuvenation biotech. Okay, uh, so thank you for being our panel today. Uh, and I would like to ask my first question. My first question is, what are the largest roadblocks that biotech companies working on aging face today? And any member of the panel may uh, start. Well, I, I think that the, the biggest roadblock at all is that there are not enough biotech companies working on aging right now. So there's only very, very few companies working there. And uh, actually, there's like just I'm, I'm aware of three of them. It's it's uh, Oisin, it's uh, Unity Biotech, and it's Icor. And actually, they don't have roadblocks, so they they get the funding that they need. And uh, actually, what we need from from my from what I see is uh, we need more um, startups in that area that actually try to work on on therapies. So why aren't there more? Why aren't there more? What is stopping? people from starting biotech companies? Uh, we need more re research. So um, uh, as opposed to, to, to um, the technology world where you just have the basic tools available to everybody and like see with the internet, you just needed the basic tools like the HTTP protocol, a web server, a database, um, and the web browser, and then you could virtually build everything that you wanted from flight booking systems through uh, web portals and whatever. But um, with uh, rejuvenation biotech, basically you need basic research, you need research results that have the potential to be translated into therapies. And uh, for one promising research uh, a way of avenue of research, you can build one company on that, and then you need to do more research. So actually, I think we have to fund more research uh, on, on, especially on, 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 on those fields that have the potential to be translated into actual rejuvenation biotech. But the panels, well, what you mean by aging and what research, you know, and by what biotech company? If it's just more genetic applying gene therapy and stuff, then they quite long term, uh, long term benefit or long term commercialization. Hence, biotech company not interested because you know they okay. won't get the money. To, to to I'm I'm a super proponent of of the sense way of doing things. So it's yeah. actually a molecular, and for me, it's molecular and cellular repair. Okay. So it's not gene, th uh, gene okay. therapy. Yeah, even those, you know, I, I could understand why there are not many biotech companies because uh, is, uh, you're looking at long-term benefit, you know, it, uh, in terms of commercialization, in terms of thing, it won't be next five years. It will be more likely next 20 years. Yes. And that is either bigger company long-term that put the money in, a bit will be interested, not, a, you know, a spin-off company. No, as, as, as if my, my experience is totally yeah. different. Mm. So the money is there. So the people are realizing that this is okay. going to be the biggest market of all times yeah. um, that's starting right now. And um, so the money is there. Simply the companies are not there. How much money? Huh? How much money? It, 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 it basically, it's going to be infinite. As soon as the companies are there, and that is the, the real issue. We don't have the startups. We need the research to, you know, uh, to incubate startups. Once the startups are there, the money will follow. Uh, so I would like to agree with Michael that, uh, of course, um, a lot of um, research should be done, a lot of mm -hmm. basic research. Uh, at the same time, I also would agree that um, the infrastructure, the format, the um, 
<coughs> you know, kind of f uh, frame should be created for longevity and aging industry, not only for research, but for industry. I also would agree that uh, uh, I don't see significant border between aging and precision medicine. So uh, precision medicine mm. and uh, advancement and practical applications of precision medicine, uh, they will lead to aging, uh, practical applications of aging technologies uh, in uh, real life. At the same time, uh, we see on our monitoring at least 100 companies and startups which are doing uh, some work and they are more or less focused on uh, aging and longevity technologies, <coughs> at least uh, focused on extension uh, health longevity. So uh, some of them are focused on something super advanced such as um, you know, applying, uh, for example, nanotech uh, for precision uh, medicine, but probably it is maybe 10 years from now. <coughs> and uh, among that uh, 100 companies, I suppose that 90 persons of them have something um, close to practice within one, two, three years. At the same time, uh, it regards uh, big amounts of investments. So there are no enough investments at all <coughs> uh, in this longevity industry. Just now, uh, I suppose approximately three, maximum five billions of dollars, and uh, uh, most of them are spending for nothing. <coughs> so, uh, for example, with Google, we have example when uh, companies are the biggest in the world, uh, and they have unlimited resources, financial resources, and uh, all, uh, also the best scientists are in their hub, but uh, nothing uh, specific, uh, you know, successful happening there. So because uh, we don't see some significant results of Calico, and at the same time we, we know that uh, with uh, very uh, half year ago, a team of scientists just decided to quit because of too big ego of uh, CEO of Verily. So this is the example mm -hmm. how uh, even having billions of dollars, uh, but uh, not uh, uh, having uh, you know reasonable structure of uh, framework, uh, people do not uh, achieve good results. So to, to go back to main question, where are the main, uh, let's say, blocks which are slowing down? Uh, so the entire biotech industry and biomedicine industry, now it is uh, f mm, formatted by big pharma companies, and they themselves significantly depends on uh, pension funds. And pension funds and governments, uh, their strategy and uh, their idea of how they exist in, in this uh, you know, on this planet and their business model. It is not so straightforward. For example, as uh, with Google or with uh, IBM, uh, which are trying to, to create that IBM Watson. So I don't know uh, what is the exact uh, impact uh, pension fund systems. Uh, uh, so probably they are one of the main factors of slow down progress in aging research entirely because uh, they influences on big pharma pharmaceutical companies uh, to be far away from aging research. <clears throat> because uh, as you know, uh, pension funds, uh, if uh, life expectancy will increase, all pension funds uh, business model will be uh, just uh, broad. Actually, they are already, most of them are already bankrupted, but they do not want to confirm this. So, but I have good news uh, because uh, I have a lot of evidence that uh, <clears throat> there will emerge a lot of new, um, you know, so let's say capacity and uh, business models for startups, and they will emerge. They are now just emerging now. During this year, I appeared at least uh, 30, f maybe 50 startups, uh, some of them in Silicon Valley, but some of them in Europe and around the world. And uh, <clears throat> these complications, which uh, were during uh, last years, for example, with Google and uh, with some other companies which had declared that they will invest a lot of money in the sphere. So, uh, absolutely right. Now also a lot of investors appears who want to invest in this topic because, uh, uh, you know, this, iner um, this uh, in, in, mm, yes, inertia in the public opinion, uh, Probably it, it is something like two years uh, behind Google. Google, I suppose, three years ago, uh, the Google announced that they will solve problem of debt. So public opinion uh, just now it is on the highest, uh, you know, rate of interest to this topic because uh, on 
World Economic Forum, there were a lot of discussion about uh, uh, that now normal life expectancy sh uh, is around 120 years. And also the Economist, this is uh, the most credible um, uh, financial and um, policy journal, they will make a series of um, <coughs> conferences. And one of them will be in the end of November in London. The name will be Aging Societies. So there will be a lot of uh, you know, discussions about specific longevity business. And more of it, they will do in San Francisco uh, conference on 7th of November. And that conference will be just similar to that London conference, but the name uh, will be different. And the name will be the business of longevity. So there will be specifically uh, some uh, panel discussions. Uh, uh, they will be named investing in longevity. So th this topic now really uh, appears to be, um, let's say, you know, we are now, this year is uh, the year before uh, longevity boom. Next year, uh, we will see uh, the rise of longevity boom, boom, similar to as it was in 1995 with dot-com boom. So my answer for this question that uh, Till this year, we didn't have uh, on um, on entire scale a uh, business model for aging uh, and longevity startups, companies, so on. Uh, but uh, next year, it will change. Okay, so I understand that from your perspective, there are not nearly enough companies working on aging at the moment. And where do you think if you want to start up one company, what uh, is the big gap in the market that you would like to fill first? What do you think is the key type of company direction? You know, is it big data with bioinformatics? Is it regenerative medicine? What is the biggest gap at the moment? For this question, I will answer uh, very in very short uh, um, form. Uh, Michael said that there will be infinite amount of and infinity, infinite capacity for investments and uh, applying this technology. So any sector of uh, uh, technologies, any sector of uh, companies, which will really give practical results, uh, everywhere uh, they will have success. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I think, think um, I'm, I'm working closely with the Sense Foundation. Um, and what we try to do, we, we try to start a sort of a rejuvenation biotech industry. And the key is um, we just, just need one company to succeed. And, and I hope it's going to be either Ocean or Unity uh, doing senescent cell clearance because this is the lowest hanging fruit that we have right now. But I think once we can demonstrate that you can actually rejuvenate humans, um, that's going to open the eyes to everybody. So th this is going to be a real game changer. It's not about like modestly slowing aging because to prove that we can modestly slow aging, like with metformin or gyro protectors or whatever, it's going to take a long time to prove that we can actually do this because if we say we slow aging by 5 or 10 percent, um, then it, we, have, we have to wait for 50 years to show that we have like slowed it down by five years. But if we can actually rejuvenate people, uh, th this is going to be some, something dramatically new. And um, uh, in animal, in rodents, of course it was rodents, uh, it, it worked. Um, I know that Oisin, they are probably uh, moving to uh, um, aged primates, hopefully beginning of next year. Um, then we have the first results there. Um, and I think this is going to be a, a big, real big game changer when people understand that we can actually rejuvenate people, like put them back, back in a healthier state. And that's, that's the moment when all the money in the world is going to be there because everybody's going to understand that this is going to be the biggest business of all times. Um, yeah, I think we are really an, nearing the end of the debate. I think you, in a few uh, minutes, so right? So, okay, yes, yeah. yes, that's what I what so I was. Yeah, but one of our panel members will yeah, have to leave. So, okay. So um, yes, uh, I suggest indeed that we take some questions <laughs> from the audience. I, I was, um, <coughs> In, uh, in uh, Stanford, because I am collaborating with uh, Tony Viscorai, of, uh, and uh, he brought us to Alcahest. Yeah. Uh, and I understood uh, they, they did not said a lot of what, what they were doing because of 
uh, of course it was too but um, uh, i understood that uh, there there was a big investment of uh, a consistent number of millions of dollars uh, starting from this uh, data that uh, uh, came from the parabio heterochronic parabiosis uh, studies. But the, of course the identification, what I understood is that they are fractionating uh, the, the, the plasma uh, into major fractions and then identify the one that has m more uh, rejuvenating activity and then go further and further in order to identify. So this was a, a clear strategy which is reasonable. But um, so take this as, a, um, as an example. What do you need? Do you need a starting um, uh, strong uh, evidence uh, because the money is there? Uh, so suppose that I would like uh, to exploit the data that we have collected on the mi microbiome of uh, old people. That, uh, that some microbes can produce uh, uh, something good for your health and to become uh, centenary. So uh, this is enough, uh, just to understand, this is enough uh, and uh, for uh, having some people say, well, I will put uh, X million uh, to develop uh, this idea or you need uh, much more uh, biological evidence uh, in order to invest money. Well, well parabiosis is, is a good example. It's not actual rejuvenation, but, it, I, but probably it, it, it's supposed to well, reactivate the stem cells. And, uh, it, not only, but not uh, only. Yeah. Um, but uh, there, there's there's pretty good evidence, like that it, it works in, in five different tissue types. And uh, if you have evidence like this for, for w w whatever therapy or, or, or procedure uh, that you propose, that, that's, uh, I think, a pretty good starting point. Um, and, uh, but it, it should be something that actually makes part of the, the system, of the human system, function like a younger human, so to speak. That's what parabiosis does. It, it, it rejuvenates the uh, certain tissues, um, same as senescent cell clearance, um, uh, um, might be clearance uh, of, of uh, 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 garbage from lysosomes and, and or, or, uh, stuff in that direction. So we can actually, where well, you can actually demonstrate, well, we take uh, some aged tissue and return it to the state of younger tissue. This, this would be something that, 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 that really uh, uh, would, would get your investment money. So, so in other words, so sorry if I, I have to understand. So you said that to delay aging is interesting, but is not the core. Yes. The core is to rejuvenate because it's much faster, and uh, you can see the results uh, on a on a shorter time. Yes, exactly. Because the selling the the idea of slowing down aging is is something that that it's it, it takes so much time to prove that in humans. If if you slow down aging just a little bit. But if you can, can uh, and, and still the, the end point would be the same. So it, it's not going to, you know, investing is about the imagination of the future. You know, people invest in, in, in companies because they investors dream of the potential future, what this company would bring along. And uh, of course, it's much more exciting if you can dream of like making old and people uh, young yes, again. But sorry, the last one, I will. I will but the other point is what I mentioned before, say, nowadays we need a lot, uh, we need um, mark, biomarker to, to make preventive medicine because uh, some diseases start 20 years before. So if I would like to have, a, say, a biomarker for Alzheimer, I can understand why a guy 20 years before the onset. So this is also another enormous field to, to yes. take into consideration because this is not rejuvenation, but is uh, prevention in the best way, so in well, the most uh, effective way. I, I totally agree. In order to prove that you have rejuvenated something, you have to have measure, uh, ways of measuring it, and therefore you'd need the biomarkers, something that well, shows you actually rejuvenated that tissue or that system, and of course you have to measure that. 
But, in, but from coming from an investor's, investor's perspective, the, 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 the emotional story sell, selling, I have rejuvenated this tissue and the company could offer a therapy that rejuvenates muscle, heart, whatever, skin, is, is, is exciting. It, it's, it, and, and, and if we're talking about investment, we're talking about selling excitement, excitement to the potential investors. So uh, just to mention, tomorrow we will talk about the uh, translation of the basic science to the clinic. And so then we will talk about the role of biomarkers or exactly how are you going to prove that the therapeutic is slowing down or reversing aging. Um, so yes. that's uh, uh, also, I would add something uh, regards uh, cloudy question. So, first of all, microbiome is one of the, uh, let's say, the most exciting forefronts of uh, longevity industry, and I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, success stories in close coming years. So this is the first. Second, of course, it is. Uh, I am absolutely sure that uh, there are a lot of uh, interrelations between uh, uh, super centenarians. Uh, there are patterns. Uh, Obviously, there are patterns uh, connected with their uh, microbiome and specifics of their microbiome. <clears throat> At the same time, uh, to go back, uh, which companies and which technology which will be more successful? Of course, this is very obvious, uh, the most simple strategy uh, that uh, companies which will show all these rejuvenating results in uh, close, in short, uh, in short terms, they will get, uh, let's say, first um, success stories. For example, uh, by view example is one of them. Uh, at the same time, uh, if to prolong this, uh, let's say, pattern, and, and the more successful among them will be the comments which will, uh, you know, make and uh, give us um, treatments for to rejuvenate skin. Uh, with, in case of skin, we have uh, the biggest tissue in our body, uh, something like, like six kilograms. And, uh, and this the is mo the most visible one. I yes, mean. and uh, it, it is the most, uh, let's say, it, it is the most straightforward uh, biomarker, uh, our skin. <coughs> so among all uh, companies, uh, the most successful on short-term strategy will be that we, uh, who will be able to deliver um, treatments and rejuvenating for skin and specifically for uh, skin of face. I, I, I agree. Uh, but uh, we have... Uh, let's say, good, very good example that uh, real big investors uh, will make their decisions and the uh, real big opinion ma makers, they will make uh, decisions in a, you know, more sophisticated way uh, because uh, these decisions regards uh, companies with, with so, such straightforward strategy, it will, be, it will make uh, such, such uh, investment decisions will make crowd. So in case of uh, crowd investing, of course, uh, such companies as BioVivo or others, which will uh, show some, you know, results on their faces, so they will uh, get a lot of uh, crowd investing foundations. <clears throat> In case of, uh, uh, let's uh, imagine uh, one person who is, uh, for example, who has 60 billions of dollars, his own wealth, and he's around 80 years old, uh, 80 years old. For him, you know, uh, to make decisions uh, uh, because uh, some some girl uh, it will, uh, they will happen some rejuvenation on, on her face for him it did not make sense for him uh, uh, he will make decisions he will want to combine uh, that 100 companies in one account in his uh, hub and uh, he will want uh, to have a panel of his uh, biomarkers and I suppose uh, he will want to have at least 500 of them and. Uh, uh, make combination of the treatments specifically tuned for his uh, his own body, his own genetics, and uh, maybe his skin will be the last uh, among his priorities. And first of all, uh, you know, maybe some other priorities will be uh, more uh, more important for, hi for him because uh, in age, uh, if he, if he's around 80, or 90, or 100, uh, he will have uh, much more greater problems than skin. So uh, here, to go back to biomarkers, and uh, they are number one in all priority. And uh, this is a question to you. To, uh, here we have the great uh, community, the, the greatest group of scientists of uh, Europe. And because I don't trust uh, too much uh, what is happening now in Silicon Valley regards with 
anti-aging and longevity topic. And I, I'm sure there will, there will be a lot of hype, a lot of, you know, of uh, defaults similar to Tirana's story. Uh, but uh, now only they will use uh, this uh, rising trend of uh, longevity. And at the same time, uh, UK and uh, North Europe, I suppose this is the place where will emerge really credible uh, longevity science. And uh, uh, you uh, should be, uh, let's say, the standard, the, the people who will, um, you know, validate all other companies. And uh, this format, I mean, I suppose that for entire longevity industry, it will be really significantly important to create a kind of format, uh, maybe um, universal format, you know, as it was uh, previously created in the uh, uh, IT industry, there, will be, there were different types of um, um, equipment, and uh, then appeared uh, USB protocols and uh, appeared a lot of plug and plays protocols. So in the case of uh, longevity industry, I suppose that uh, scientists, first of all, should create this uh, uh, universal panel of uh, biomarkers, agent biomarkers, and at the same time create a universal uh, system of uh, the dating of credibility of uh, technologies, uh, of startups. In that case, uh, investors will, uh, will invest in uh, real good companies, in real good technologies, and not in overhyped companies and technologies. Any more questions from the audience? Uh, DJ? Uh, yes. Um, um, First I, first, I want to say that I really admire your work as a life extensionist, both of you. Um, then uh, my, my question. So uh, we all know that uh, uh, public institutions, but also uh, big companies, they are shy. They don't want uh, to invest in uh, risky business, complicated business. Okay, so that's one of the reasons there is no uh, work on longevity uh, on this side. Uh, but uh, what I heard here is promotion of uh, startups, and I have the impression that the, the startups, there, there are really many uh, startups concerning uh, all uh, health fields, but also ma many other fields. And sometimes I have the impression that the people, that many people behind these startups, they uh, have more time, they need more time to look finance to look uh, for money and to find so, some kind of uh, short-term ideas than really uh, to fight uh, for uh, longevity in our example. So how do you think that uh, it's possible to combine, uh, let's say, both uh, positive aspects of, uh, of uh, how, how, how is it possible to have uh, st startups or big companies or public institutions, but okay, uh, really uh, working on uh, on aging, uh, because uh, well, I, I would l I would love to think, like you said, Michael, that uh, uh, rejuvenation for human beings is uh, not so far away, uh, but I don't think so. So I think it's a long-term project, uh, and how to convince to invest there. Well. Long long time project, maybe not for animals, but for for human beings. Uh, it's almost certain. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think really where you, you you can look at the, uh, the thing at, at two ways. If you just try to modestly slow down the aging process, you're just going the way big pharma is going. So this is very conventional thinking. So the 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 paradigm shift would really be rejuvenation, and the, I, I can I can say I think we should 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 strive for to rejuvenate, not a whole human, maybe just one sort of tissue. And as, as you said, um, Alka has, they got uh, instantly funding, like 70, 80 million dollars uh, for, for their parabiosis. Um, so um, once you go for real rejuvenation, even if it's only part of the body or part of, part of the system, there's no lack of funding. This is one thing. And I think once we, if, if we think of it in, in, in a big, bigger scale, not just doing it like we've always done this, um, if we can really demonstrate this in a human being, I don't know when this will happen, but I say if we can demonstrate this, this will fundamentally change the perception of what this is all about. 
and then the public opinion will sway, and then all the money is going to flow in, 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 into the in, in universities, into in, into everything. So this this is going to be this is the change. Of course, you're totally right. We can work on uh, in slowing aging. We can in, invest in all these companies. Me personally, I'm trying to. To uh, speed up the the the, the, the to speed up that uh, um, uh, the the time until we reach this turning point, because this is going to be the real shift in 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 in, in the perception of what uh, life extension should be or can be all about. So um, and 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 maybe I'm the wrong person to ask for an, about all this other other stuff. But um, I know that um, like for example, we in we um, I, I helped uh, fund uh, Oishin, I helped fund Ico Therapeutics. There was no, there was no problem f uh, finding the money and people to invest it because once you understand, wow, we have the chance of like, maybe if the chance is small, but the chance is there that we can rejuvenate. Uh, and it, it, of course, it was only animal studies, it was only rodents, but the delivery um, uh, system works and in animals it, 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 it has extended um, uh, uh, the healthy lifespan by an average of, of 25%. Um, and this is very exciting, and, and for this excitement, you can, can get investments. This is just what, what I'm saying. So this is, it is, and it is not about uh, big uh, investment funds thinking about uh, doing logical investments. This is, this is the conventional thing, but I've been through the, 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 the dot-com boom, you know, where, where the internet exploded. The, if you're in, in such an inflection point, it's not about logic anymore. You know, it, it's, it's not about like calculating exactly the numbers. It, it's about the imagination, what, what can happen. And if you, if you think about it, I mean, oh my, I don't have my iPhone with me, but you see, I, I've got an iPhone, you know. It's, it's a, small, a small communication device, and the company manufacturing that telephone is one of the uh, most valuable companies on the planet. It's $250 billion valuation. So, and if you ask yourself, what, would, what is, the, what is the, the ratio that you would put at your telephone versus yourself being healthy as a 30-year-old person, don't, worry, don't have to worry about cancer, Alzheimer's, heart disease, all the gruesome stuff that comes with age, how much more worth is that to you? 100 times, 200 times, 500 times, then you got, uh, then you got the market valuation of the apple of life extension. And, and this is the market we're, we're talking about. It's a hundred times bigger than the internet market. And, and investors are starting to realize that if this real life extension is coming along, this is going to be the market size. And this is why I, I don't have any doubt that the money, once we have startups that, that work on true rejuvenation uh, technologies, they have all the money in the world that they need to do this. And they're gonna find ways to bring it to the market, um, if we, if in, in, in the beginning it will not be the regulated market, um, there's talks about well, like BioViva doing it in the Fiji Islands or doing it in other countries. So and and uh, once people do this, everybody wants to be in there, and then then the the whole ball gets rolling. The, this is my vision on how how things uh, uh, can turn out. Do you know what Calico is doing? No. But I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're working on something like this. I think they're also do, trying to do big data, genetic analysis, and then trying to modestly slow down aging. But they're, they're very secretive about what they're doing. Could I ask I'm going to ask another question, and then we go back to the audience. So my question is, if you will take the aging biotech industry, so companies working on aging, and you compare it to other biotech companies that are not working on aging, say the agriculture biotech business or those working on HIV and so on. Um, if you compare those two, what would you say is like the differences in terms is, um, of like raising the funding or getting the, the work done, you know, how, how easy, what are the unique challenges that differ between these two types of biotech? <coughs> Of course, uh, there's absolutely different uh, spheres. So, as I mentioned previously, uh, in case of uh, typical biotech industry, biomedicine industry, uh, all startups uh, dealing with uh, venture investors on first stages. And venture investors, in case of uh, biotech, they do not uh, add any significant value uh, in a position with IT industry. In IT industry, we have uh, venture investors who are guiding, who are leading uh, progress. They are. Uh, pushing uh, startups to go towards progress. In the case of biotech, uh, venture investors, they do not uh, pushing uh, startups to any progress. They are pushing startups uh, to be 
tuned and packed uh, for acquisition by Big Pharma. And Big Pharma, I don't know what they are doing, but uh, I mean, in most cases, they are not interested in, as we discussed previously, uh, in all the technologies which can uh, rejuvenate, for example. And uh, in case of uh, what will lead to really uh, great, uh, super big dot com boom, uh, which will be probably 100, maybe 1,000 times more com uh, measured in, uh, in the capitalization compared with dot com boom. <coughs> so uh, we will have it. We will have it in five, maximum 10 years, and uh, we are close to start uh, of that um, gold, golden age uh, of aging uh, science. Uh, my, my forecasting uh, is that uh, it will start next year, and uh, in two, maximum three years, they will uh, emerge uh, market and business model and uh, um, global capacity for this new industry and new companies and new technology because they will, they will be started recognized by big investors, not uh, by big pharma. So my prediction that main investors will be not from a big pharma, yeah, uh, but uh, they, will, they will come from uh, IT and they will uh, come from uh, big, uh, sovereign funds, I mean uh, from big wealthy countries, which will want to reconstruct their economy, uh, investing in uh, super novel technologies. So one of uh, uh, simple examples, Abu Dhabi has uh, two and a half trillion dollars uh, national fund, and uh, they are going to transform their economy fr from uh, two and a half trillion dollars. Uh, Sweden has uh, 900 billions. So, in case of Abu Dhabi, they are investing in, uh, they are going to invest in different uh, <coughs> new technologies to reconstruct their economy from uh, oil to something post oil era. And uh, one uh, first investments from their side was recently, probably one month ago, three billions into Uber company. But uh, <coughs> uh, I'm sure that. Uh, till the end of uh, next year, they will start uh, investing some uh, investments funds, so they will be not uh, leading uh, investors. They will follow some leading investors who will uh, create uh, big enough in, uh, investments vehicles to invest in the longevity industry, because in case of Abu Dhabi, uh, the minimum level of investments will be 100 million of dollars. So, I, and I know at least three countries which are now uh, interested in uh, doing some, uh, you know, uh, let's say, analysis uh, regards this uh, mm, longevity topic, uh, aging uh, science and so on, and <clears throat> to apply uh, for transformation of uh, the economy. Uh, there is one uh, example, I don't know how it will be successful, but at least uh, it is on the first stage, it is Kazakhstan. Uh, Dario probably tomorrow, I don't know when he will uh, speak about that, will explain. Uh, that case, I suppose. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that Abu Dhabi and some other uh, s such big countries, uh, which uh, have mm, you know, enormous amounts of uh, budgets and do, do not uh, know exactly where to invest, so from them, uh, a couple of billions will uh, come into this industry. And uh, it will, uh, of course, it will boost significantly. Yeah, I was just wondering about um, what your thoughts on big pharma companies were in respect of um, their revenue streams. <coughs> are, are, yeah, all come from the treatment and recurrence and re reoccurrence of diseases of, of aging. So the way I see them is that they've they've been sitting in almost an, a senescent state themselves. You know, they don't want to rock the boat. It's only when a genie starts coming out of the bottle such as may be happening right now, that they may want to jump on board and be the first people to arrive at solutions. So do you think that maybe there's a turning point in the way that Big Pharma might approach longevity, which, ha which there hasn't been before now? Well, act actually, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. But I think if you look at the history of, of what, what happened over the last 100 years, uh, the big players in the market that was completely turned upside down usually don't end up being the big players of, uh, of the next generation. Or might it be mobile or might it be steam engines, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, this is the, like move, move steam engines to electric motors, and of course they have the opportunity to do this, but they will probably also um, uh, um, in incorporate a change in culture. And but it, of course it would be welcome. Everybody working on this technology and 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 and, and uh, contributing resources would be great, because I mean in the end um, rejuvenation is and and really keeping people in, 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 in a younger state is what medicine is all about. I mean, it's just about keeping people healthy. And you can't stay, you can't be healthy if you age. So it's like you say, it's a total contradiction. So you're, if, you're, if you're aging, you will, gonna, will get sick. So um, it, it's just the, 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 it's just the, 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 the core of, of, of doing medicine. It's like keeping keep people healthy indefinitely, hopefully. You don't think there's a, a danger of big pharma derailing or or well, delaying I, I don't, I don't know areas. whether this is, I mean, I, 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 I actually, I don't know the future and I don't know how, the, how, how all the players in that market will react, but what I will, what I personally know is like, if a, a company like Oisin or, or any other startup like Alka has that has a valid therapy and they will get all the funding that they want, uh, that they need, and then they, they move to Kazakhstan or they move to the Fiji Islands with their first clinic and offer the treatments, and, and, and people will go there and, 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 and use the treatments and they will come home and look rejuvenated and are rejuvenated and people will start talking about it. You, you will see it in the newspapers, you will see it in the evening news. So it's th this, this is gonna be a real topic and then um, uh, everybody wants to have that. And, and you see, and, and it's gonna change regulation and I, I think it's something that, that's, that's really gonna <coughs> snowball once it gets started. Yeah, yeah, So we do a lot of with big pharma because uh, we helping uh, our portfolio companies, uh, you know, in negotiations with big pharma, and we do relations with big pharma, and we do government relations for our portfolio companies. And uh, uh, I should ha highlight that uh, big pharma is too big now uh, to, you know, <laughs> to be able somehow transform their existing uh, business models. And big pharma. Average amount is uh, from one to two hundred billions of dollars. Uh, it is collective mind, uh, which do not have any reasonable long-term strategy because uh, top managers they have the duty to produce uh, uh, quarterly reports, and uh, they do not care about any kind of rejuvenation or longevity and so on because uh, their business model depends on their relations with uh, governments and pension funds, and uh, there is no. Uh, they depend on diseases. Yes, no yes, uh, so, <clears throat> and more of it, uh, in case of Big Pharma, uh, there is no interface how to, to, to you know, um, uh, to interact with them. If you will try to do this, and uh, you will somehow name that you are in aging, longevity topic, so you will have a lot of interest on personal level from uh, top uh, managers of Big Pharma, uh, top executives e even, but uh, they make uh, collective decisions. And in, collect in their collective mind, this is very different from, uh, uh, let's say, what should be done. It is uh, just uh, here, outside. We have a collective mind of Europe, yes? We are in capital of uh, European Union. And uh, countries separately, they, are, uh, they can produce something uh, smart. But uh, when they join into one uh, collective mind, I don't know what they produce. Because uh, instead of uh, making the demonstrations and supports, uh, you know, financing for aging research, they are uh, they're crying some, something there, very different from uh, what uh, what uh, European Union should be interested in. So to go back to uh, big pharma question, uh, this is a big question, and my, uh, my, uh, my prediction that big pharma will follow the trend, but uh, the trend setters will be not big pharma. The trend setters will become uh, uh, IT giants, probably. Maybe it will be Facebook, maybe it will be Alibaba. So uh, pay attention to the uh, phrase which uh, Jack Ma said on 25th of May in Kazakhstan. Have you, uh, uh, anybody knows what he said? No. no? Why? So uh, Jack Ma, president of Alibaba, uh, he was on 25th of May in Kazakhstan. There was uh, uh, Asian Economic Forum, something like that. So they were discussing so-called digital silk road from uh, China to Europe. The idea is to create a super um, advanced, uh, you know, uh, 
digital ecosystem which will support uh, development of uh, business and uh, uh, Kazakhstan will be in the middle of that uh, digital Silk Road and the idea that they will deliver uh, very advanced and very sophisticated uh, and, and in most cases free of charge uh, cloud computing system and different uh, advanced digital technology solutions for entrepreneurs who, who will do business in, in that regions. Jack Ma said at that uh, economic forum uh, without any reasons just like uh, in the middle of his speech. You know what? Uh, I suppose that soon we will have to produce laws which will uh, limit the life extension up to 200 years, not more. So that the wealthy people will have uh, ability to live not more than 200 years. So this is, uh, uh, pay attention. This is not, uh, you know, this is not um, Aubrey de Grey. Uh, this is not uh, even uh, Peter Thiel. Uh, this is Jack Ma, who is president of a corporation. I suppose now it is uh, 250 billions of dollars. So his uh, phrases, they mean something for shareholders of the company. And uh, if uh, they will think that he became crazy, he become crazy, so uh, the conversation could uh, decrease. But he was not afraid to, to, say, to say that. And uh, pay attention that on 17th of May, one week before that World Economic Forum, uh, some people sitting here, we are in uh, Kazakhstan, and uh, there was uh, 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 Bajerontology Forum, so uh, something like a regenerative medicine uh, conference, and uh, there was a really deep discussion uh, about all that rejuvenation technologies, gene therapy uh, um, injections, uh, applying artificial intelligence to analyze uh, biomarkers of aging, and creating an uh, entire ecosystem for slow down aging, rejuvenating, and uh, trans uh, transformation of uh, uh, country uh, economics by uh, creating global hub of uh, biotech but focused on uh, health and longevity. So I don't know what happened specifically with Jack Ma, but uh, just one week after that uh, conference, he decided to announce that uh, crazy idea that let's limit uh, uh, life by only 200 years. So uh, that's why I suppose that Alibaba will become one of the biggest investors in longevity industry. N not Facebook and not Peter Thiel. Uh, the biggest investors will become from Asia and uh, East world, not West world. Uh, on West world, they will invest in uh, Ferranus companies, like uh, the companies uh, which can produce a lot of uh, marketing. <coughs> Sorry, I just um, I had a, uh, a quick question for Michael because I think you you're involved with the uh, Sense uh, Institute, yes. And I just wondered, uh, out of there, the various uh, avenues that they're working on, if there are um, some more than others that you think might uh, give rise to commercial um, possibilities in the near future. Yeah, uh, sure. They, um, I mean, they just uh, they just had a tremendous success with their MitoSense uh, project. Uh, transporting two or uh, backing up two of the mitochondrial genes to the to the nucleus, mm -hmm. so um, I think that's a candidate to do something. And apart from that, there are, there are a few research projects uh, that that uh, we are also funding together with them. It's like um, uh, clearing uh, a seven keto cholesterol uh, uh, from from the foam cells um, um, to reverse uh, arterial plaque. Um, there is um, work on uh, trying to break uh, crosslinks mm -hmm. and, um, uh, well, for example, to restore skin, uh, skin elasticity. Um, so th stuff in, in, in that area. But there's nothing that you can uh, pinpoint where you say, okay, this is what I said. There's a lack of startups, actually. Yeah. So if, if, if anything would come up, that would be funded in instantly because th this is like, like Oisin, for example, and Ico. These are two things that came out of sense. Uh, they had no trouble at all um, uh, um, uh, funding uh, money. I think Oisin did three seed rounds because they just uh, uh, received money from from the and Leon you go with them uh, in in them with the, uh, as well. And um, uh, Icor uh, wants to raise a big seed, a uh, big uh, Series A next year. Uh, Ocean wants to raise a big Series A next year, and I don't think that they have any uh, trouble finding the investors uh, in in okay. that. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, we are half an hour over time already, so I think we should probably close the panel. Uh, I would like just just to conclude. Uh, there was a couple of questions: uh, what to do for, let's say, startups or scientists who are close, uh, you know, to try to commercialize their technology or, uh, let's say, ideas, uh, concepts. So first of all, uh, use our email. Email just me. Uh, we are based in London. Uh, we are deep knowledge ventures, but uh, um, we are mainly focused on artificial intelligence and uh, fintech and uh, different advanced technologies. And we have subsidiary investment fund. We uh, incorporated it um, <coughs> this year in London, Deep Knowledge Life Sciences. Uh, this fund will be focused specifically on longevity, uh, rejuvenation, and slow down aging. So all the Amazon of, of this uh, industry and also precision preventive um, medicine. Uh, so if you, if you have any ideas, concepts uh, in for-profit approach and also non-profit approach, uh, we would uh, like to, uh, you know, to start uh, discussion, collaboration with you because in our uh, strategy, in our concept, uh, non-profit and for-profit should be 50-50 uh, because uh, this industry it is not just for-profit industry. This is uh, big impact industry. It is just similar to what Google uh, had done uh, 15 years ago. When uh, Google, Google now is the biggest company in the world, but uh, they did biggest impact on the uh, using internet. Because when they were born uh, in 1998, uh, there were at the time 17 searching uh, companies. And uh, Google hadn't um, had at that time business model because uh, Yahoo had a business model and a lot of other big companies, searching uh, companies had a business model. And uh, all of them died uh, till, this, till today and only Yahoo survived and uh, now it was bought by, I don't remember by whom, but yes, uh, uh, being close to bankruptcy. And uh, Google now has more than 600 billion of dollars of globalization. What Google, uh, what they did, they were focused on improving technology. So they, uh, they improved technology and they outperformed all uh, their competitors by technology. And they, by this, they, uh, they created big impact and they uh, uh, didn't have to, uh, you know, to do any kind of promotion because clients uh, came uh, to them without uh, any promotion. So this will happen with uh, all companies which will really bring uh, practical results. Uh, they will not uh, need to have a lot of promotion because uh, their work, their technology will be, will be the best uh, uh, promotional engine. At the same time, uh, uh, what, uh, what happens uh, in most cases with uh, scientists especially and even with uh, start uh, that they uh, now, um, Nowadays, they have to deal primarily with so-called shark investors. As specific, as especially, it happens in Silicon Valley, because uh, maybe Michael has uh, uh, other experience. Uh, most of uh, startups uh, which came to us, they, they said that uh, they have uh, big troubles in the negotiation with uh, Silicon Valley investors because uh, they mostly focused, I mean, investors uh, to give uh, the smallest amount of money to get the biggest part of sh uh, portion of shares. And if the company will be close to something, uh, they will be uh, packed in beautiful box and will be s sold uh, for some budget, but uh, not, uh, not um, uh, in the strategy of founders. Because uh, the founders who are in longevity industry, of course, uh, they do not want to, to be acquired by big farmers. So they want to, uh, um, improve their, uh, their technology and become new, uh, themselves new big farmers instead of uh, old, uh, outdated uh, big farmers. So again, uh, for, uh, anybody who has um, good ideas and good proposals, just contact us and uh, I'm sure that uh, there will appear a lot of new in investment funds, a lot of, of new entrepreneurs who will help in business development for longevity and anti-aging startups. And also, uh, I'm sure that during uh, next year, there will appear a couple of so-called platforms because now uh, venture investing 
is going to so-called uh, platform solutions. Because uh, there is typical model 220 when uh, venture funds they do not invest their own money. They take uh, money of LP lim limited partners and takes uh, two persons from uh, them for man uh, management for management of that money, uh, not their own money. And then they take uh, 20 persons from uh, in case of uh, successful exit. So in most cases in, in biotech industry from uh, start to exit, it takes seven, 10 years. So it means uh, from 14 to 20 persons for measurement of money and 20 uh, from uh, exit. So investors, real owner of the money, he loses at least uh, from 30 to 40 persons of his uh, profits uh, to that uh, venture investors who are not interested in improving the all. They are interested uh, how to uh, transform the company and to sell to big pharma. Uh, in, but now in fintech industry, in blockchain, if you heard about uh, that new uh, re really booming industry, they use so-called investment platforms. So it is a combination of uh, crowd investing and venture investing, uh, angel, uh, angel investors and uh, syndicates of uh, angel investors. And uh, they have also big follow uh, investors. For example, um, Richard Branson uh, supports a couple of uh, such uh, platforms for investing, uh, which are specifically tuned for uh, to help uh, young but very dynamic uh, fintech startups, uh, uh, you know, to rise on, the, on that uh, wave of um, uh, fintech boom, and uh, that platforms are created in such a mode that. Uh, they do not need any kind of managers. So they have two managers and 10 software developers because this is just uh, advanced website. And uh, investors and also startups, they uh, can uh, make, um, let's say, smart matching there. And uh, there, uh, so this is Uber model, Uber, Uber approach for, you know, reinventing inve uh, in investment strategies. And uh, my prediction is that uh, there will emerge a couple of such platforms uh, for novel uh, biomedicine industry and specifically for longevity industry. And uh, you will see it in uh, close coming months, at least one of them. And also, I'm sure that after that uh, conference in London, uh, organized by The Economist, which will be on 28th of uh, November, they invited me to, to be a speaker there on, on the panel uh, investment in longevity in London. And uh, in San Francisco, there will be uh, Brian Kennedy and Nir Brazilai on, on, uh, also on their panels. And also there will be Esther Dyson and uh, don't remember, a couple of other uh, venture funds. So after that conference, because the economists, uh, normal people do not read the economists, as you know. Uh, the economists, uh, People who are reading really economists, it is uh, people from uh, this uh, European Union government, and maybe Arabian sheikhs, and maybe some other presidents of such countries as Kazakhstan. So when uh, that conference will happen, I'm sure that uh, a lot of good news uh, will uh, you know, appear in all other, let's say, subsectors of uh, longevity industry. So, uh, The conclusion is that uh, I'm sure that with advances in IT technologies, but return for uh, management and organizing of even uh, research, uh, you know, studies in uh, aging, uh, it will help us uh, to emerge in a smart collective uh, system to improve all, uh, and boost all that, uh, you know, uh, research and development as well as uh, business development and investment relations for startups and for also for scientists. Because, and, and also it, it will be, these platforms will uh, help, uh, you know, to, uh, to make fundraising for non-profit, uh, uh, non-profit project. Because, for example, f uh, I'm sure that the United Nations uh, will start to finance uh, projects which will deal with uh, so-called, which will, can be able to solve at least uh, at least in some fragments, uh, uh, that problem of uh, silver tsunami. Because uh, uh, this problem is uh, great now and it's slowed down developing countries. And uh, uh, 
uh, it's also influenced on developing countries because developing countries now do not have uh, good enough access to you know um, finances because developed countries they have internal crisis of aging population and uh, um, in most cases uh, the economy for example uh, Japan example is very uh, clear example how uh, 30 years ago Japan uh, could outperform in GDP US but now they are uh, close to bankruptcy as, as the state just because uh, the amount of old people on retirement uh, soon will be uh, bigger in quantity compared with uh, young people who produce the GDP. So we have a lot of opportunities and uh, as investors and as scientists and uh, as entrepreneurs and also as, uh, as patients and maybe most of us will uh, you know leapfrog that uh, state of uh, uh, yes, so we'll, uh, maybe somehow we'll, uh, I'm sure that all of us uh, now a little bit ill, but maybe we will achieve uh, the situation when uh, some of us will become healthier. 